I have seen a lot of scope leveling tools, but nothing like this. Gavin Gee here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm back with Travis Fox. What's up, Travis? Hey, Gavin. How are you? Nice to see you guys. Yeah. We are fans of Short Action Customs. Yes, we are. We've done a few stories on their gear lately. This stuff kind of takes a completely different approach, all super high quality. We've Pretty done high level. The modular headspace comparator kit. The seating die. The modular sizing die. And now we're back with another piece of gear, which is the final scope level. But before we get into this particular tool, we've done a lot of scope mounting, haven't we? Yes, we have. We <laughs> change scopes around, we try new rings. A lot of times we're having to change the rings because the bro barrel profile or the scope doesn't fit on mm -hmm. this, right? So we're having to change things around all the time. So we've gotten pretty good at leveling scopes and, and we've tried quite a few different methods and this is kind of a next level type thing. Yeah, so you know we've done scope leveling on our optics test rig, so you're gonna wanna see some of our scope reviews to check out uh, what that looks like, and we kind of implicitly get you know reticle alignment from and all that. But when you're talking about taking a scope and putting it on a rifle, uh, first, we typically get the rifle level, right? So that your Picatinny rail is sitting perfectly level, put the rings on, you know, rest the scope in the, in the ring bases, put on the ring caps, and then, you've got a couple things that you're looking at, right? On the scope, you want your adjustments for windage and elevation to track true to horizontal and vertical. Because if you don't, let's say we split it at 45 degrees to throw a really bad error on there, now you've got elevation yep. and windage, and you're not getting the full of either that, that you would want there. Obviously, you just want windage here, right? So mechanically, you want the scope adjustment for, for windage and elevation to sit perfectly level. But then also there is the reticle, right? Which is right. etched onto the glass or how, however that's configured on your scope. And you want that to be level as well. And sometimes they agree, sometimes they don't totally agree. And you're gonna wanna check out those, those scope reviews. What this tool is gonna allow us to do is gonna be to level the reticle directly to the Picatinny rail, basically right. to the ring bases. To the ring bases. Clamped yeah. on to the Picatinny rail, and then you know you're gonna have solid reticle alignment, and then you can then, and I think we should at the end of this video, check to see how the body either agrees with that right. or, or does not. So that is where that is where you're gonna come into issues with your scope quality is, is your reticle true to your turrets? So we're gonna, mm -hmm. we're gonna level to the, the reticle mm -hmm. with this tool here then you're gonna to have to check and make sure your reticle is level to your turrets. Yep. And that's gonna be done with a tracking test. Yeah, and we can even split the differences if we need to. So, next, we're gonna get the tool out of the box and see what's included. All right, Gavin, let's get this box open up and see what we got. Truth be told, Travis has already had this out. He's already <laughs> been using it, but we wanted to show you what's in the box. Chunk of metal. Mm-hmm. Nicely machined. Mounting screws. Ah. I'll show you what this is for later. Yep. That's to string up the deer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, one of the important little parcels here. So the kit, this is the kit. You can just buy this by itself, but this kit includes the paracord and what's gonna end up being a plumb bob later, and the Sterrett pocket level mounting for the bolts. Mm -hmm. So this unit has several methods that it can be used. Mm -hmm. We can mount it on a tripod, which we're going to show you in a minute. Mm -hmm. It's got holes in the base. We could mount it onto a, if you had a shooting bench that you wanted to keep, mm -hmm. that we want to use this on, or a portable plate or whatever. You could put it on a plate. You could mount it into a uh, bench vise. Mm -hmm. um, Short Action Customs also sells a couple Arca, of... Arca, right? Yeah, so this is an Arca rail. That's yep. what's going to go on the tripod. I love that. Yep. Short Action Customs sells a, an Arca plate. You can mount this on something. This slides on, yeah. tightens cool. down, so then you can take it off. Yep. This tool is used on their barrel vices. Mm -hmm. They also have a, uh, another modular plate that, that is used for many things. Very, very handy, cool. very handy. So the design that they use on these, like a lot of their instrument, like a lot of their tools, are adaptable to various users to be used in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Our method of using it today is to put it on a, on a two vets tripod, which we'll show you here in a second. 
This is just a standard Starrett level. Mm -hmm. You can buy these on lots of places, but it comes in the kit. Yeah. So he hexagonal body. It's very very simple, uh, but good piece of gear. Yeah. What what short axis has done here is, is they machine this so all these surfaces here are parallel and level. Mm -hmm. The feet here are adjustable. If you guys look here, so this is adjustable this direction, adjustable this direction. It's and pretty cool to design. This almost looks like a tie rod end here. It's got yeah. a, a bushing in it so that yeah. it can tilt and articulate and be perfectly solid. Right. If you had this bolted down on a table and the table wasn't flat, you can then adjust mm -hmm. this to get it level on all axes. Mm -hmm. So why don't we do this? We'll take the final scope level, we'll use the integrated Arca to attach it to a tripod, then we'll move it over to a bench box. Yep. So let's talk about what we've got here. Uh, we've got the Athlon Ares BTR Gen 2 four and a half to 27 by 50. We had this on the 6.5 PRC Bergara hunting rifle. We did a full tested review on this. We had the original prototype of our optics test rig and we wanted to use this scope because it fared really well in terms of reticle alignment to the scope body itself. So if it we did. do everything right, we get the reticle level, the body should be level, right? Yep, it did. So we got the XLR rings, they're torqued down onto the base Mm -hmm. Like what you would have for your eye relief, you'd have that all set up. You know where you're going to be eye relief wise. Brings are where they want to be on the scope. Yep. We're going to take the Arca, clamp it into the tripod. So you could be out at a match somewhere in the field. You already have your tripod. This is a way that you could use the tool. Yep. You don't want to come in here. You want to get your your four and a half level this direction. Then you're going to want to get your level. Yep. Right to left then. So. That's one way you can do this with a tripod, and you're gonna use you can use the wheels here. You can use the ball head. Yep. Wheels are a little more exact, mm -hmm. but we are here in the shop, and I feel like the vice method is going to give us a much more accurate result, less moving parts to yeah. the, to do this. Nothing to bump and get your results invalidated right. with. Right. So all we're gonna that. we're gonna pull it off the two vets tripod. Okay. We're gonna put it into the. I think it's so light. Put it into the uh, vice. We're gonna get a rough level here. So just kind of a starting point, right? Because we've got both axes that we can adjust once we get down to the fine tuning stage there. Okay. You like that? Yep. Okay. So next we're going to do the fine tuning. So we've got adjustments here on the front. There's one and then two on the back. Tell me about these. All right, so your adjustment on the front and the, and the two in the back at the same time are gonna do this fore aft movement, which you know is not so critical with reticle mm -hmm. alignment, but you wanna get the scope level on the base. It's kind of your elevation yeah. adjustment, as it were. Yep. The two on the rear here are gonna do the left-right movement to get this up and down to get us level so we can mm -hmm. get onto the plumb bob. Now, when we're doing this, we have to adjust them simultaneously and keep them snug because you, they just doesn't work unless you keep them tight mm -hmm. and you just you're lowering one and raising the other. Gotcha. And the same with the front and the rear. Okay. So we're gonna take a stair level mm -hmm. and we're gonna show you guys how this goes on here and we do the leveling. Sure. So we put the level on, we get this fore aft. We got that pretty close with the, the clamp down on the vise, didn't we? We did. Yeah. And this is the real critical one. Okay. I like that. Nice. That looks good. All right. Okay. So the next step is to level the reticle. Yes. So we've got a camera looking through the scope, right? We've got the paracord that came with the kit hanging from the wall. That's our gravity reference line. Another thing to mention here is this is the new Wheeler Fat Sticks. You guys saw in my Moab trip recap, we went to a Moab event and we got a look at the new Wheeler tool lineup, new branding. This is the first preview that we have, torque limiters. We got our 45 inch pound torque limiter for Already the ring done bases. Yep. And then we've got 25 for the ring caps. So now we got to just rotate the scope, right? make sure it looks correct with the paracord and yep. tighten her down, huh? So you guys can see on this other camera view that we have here that the scope is loose. We're able to just rotate it around here. 
it's maintaining its level on the base, it's clamped, clamped everywhere. Isn't that nice? Because when you have a rifle on a bipod or in a, in <laughs> yeah. a bench system, it just rocks around. Yeah, it's and, not yeah. working too well. You got to keep right. leveling the rifle again. <laughs> yeah, this is totally locked in. So I can just take yep. this thing. Get my reticle so that it's... I went a little too far, I guess. Yeah. And we're going to have to check this as we clamp down the rings. Because as we've noted with yep. our precision optics testing, when you tighten ring caps down, the scope does tilt ever yeah. so slightly. And it's enough to make a difference in some cases. So this is where you have uh, the discipline to do a good sequence on torquing things down. I like to do things to get them snug, finger mm -hmm. tight, all the yep. way around. I do them in a cross pattern. Like a, a cylinder head on a car, huh? You're exactly. building an engine, yeah. Okay, so these are all snuggish, just very lightly mm -hmm. finger snug down. You could probably still rotate the scope a touch if you need I to. Probably, so I thinking? probably could. Yeah. But I want to do this, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to double check this reticle one more time here. Yep. I like that. I think it looks great. Nice. Yeah, that does. Okay. Good job. <laughs> so this is where you can have the mm -hmm. change happen in, mm -hmm. in your torquing. You guys can see that in the camera, how it moves it a little bit, how it kind of jumps a little bit, but it's staying lined up. Nice. Yeah, that looks really good. So if you look, if you look at the uh, alignment, the reticle is, it's been shifted ever so slightly, but it's straight in parallel with mm -hmm. the paracord. Yep. So I'm happy. Now we have one more thing to do here. The bubble level is. Oh yeah. Get everything agreeing all at the same time. How about that? Nice. Alrighty. Bubble level is important when you're doing long range shooting because you want to ensure that your windage and your elevation adjustments are on axis and not tilted and splitting the difference, throwing off your, your adjustment or your hold. Yeah. yeah, there's a formula you can look at with, uh, you know, a tenth of a mil, a tenth of a mil at the butt stock will cause, you know, several inches difference at, mm -hmm. you know, more than a couple hundred yards. Uh, there's a formula you can look at for doing that, yep. but it's it's significant how it can do that. So you want to look at that. Yeah. Look at that. It stayed straight when you did okay. that. Okay. So next, we're going to check the body, the body of the scope, and see how that agrees with the reticle. So this is one of those scopes where if you look closely, you've got reference surfaces both on the top and on the bottom, and that gives you a good way to quantify how level is the reticle in the scope body. We've got the reticle level with gravity. Let's see if gravity is level with the scope body. So take the machine is parallel, parallel yep. here onto. Oh man. Nice. Nice. That's just what we saw in our tested experiment, right? We were looking through the scope with the camera. We've got the, the target frame perfectly level. We got the scope perfectly level and everything agreed. And that's totally validated here. I'm happy. Yeah, so this I've is a, got this scope right here. <laughs> yeah. This is a cool tool. Uh, it is, I, I have a, I just get this sense that this thing is just like bomb proof level. There's just mm -hmm. no question about it to me. Yep. Ready to shoot that match or go hunting with it. Yeah. So thank you, Travis, for showing us the final scope level. I'm glad that we have this in the shop. I think this is going to be super handy. You know, when we're, we're moving scopes all the time, we're doing this kind of thing. We're putting different rings on different heights. This tool is going to help us get things dialed in more quickly, and that's going to be definitely real valuable. Increase accuracy, increase our success. Yep. So here's what we want to know from you is how are you leveling your scopes? What kind of scopes are you leveling? 
what kind of equipment are you using and techniques, drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Don't forget to click on that first link in the video description. We'll have links to product pages and a bit more technical information about the tool. Thank you for watching. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.